Welcome to the Miss Universe Columbia 2023 recap. My name is Danny. Thanks for clicking the episode. If you would like to see the extended version of this, please check out memberships. Let's jump into our recap for Miss Universe Columbia 2023. Let's talk a little bit about production. I was so impressed by the show. The venue looked amazing. The music was incredible. The performers, whoever saw this pageant in person, they didn't just get a pageant, they got a concert. And I love that. I love that two for one deal for them. I also really appreciate great choreography and we got to appreciate if you were watching from online instead of live. When we saw it online because of the camera cut, essentially they were able to kind of sneak the contestants on to start their intros. And I love that little moment. It was, it was just really well timed. Honestly, just like the camera timing of the show too, uh, how quick they were able to cut to different areas of the show was very impressive. I'll be honest, as I was watching this, I just wanted to get up and dance. I just, I just, that's what I wanted to do. The music was so fantastic. Let's go salsa, let's go bachata, let's go. I was thrilled. Also, they were playing some Shakira, which makes so much sense. And it was just perfect. It was just, this, it was just perfect. We also had former Miss Universe Columbia hosting. Loved that. You know I'm a big fan of supporting the formers and really any of our contestants. So let's keep making these opportunities for these women. Fantastic. Great job. I also want to give a quick thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. If you've been feeling like something has been interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, then BetterHelp might just be exactly what you're looking for. BetterHelp can assist you by connecting you to a licensed therapist who can provide helpful and unbiased advice. You can have your sessions via phone call, video chat, or even through messaging, whatever works best for you. If for some reason you feel like your therapist isn't the right fit for you, you can easily switch to a different therapist without the hassle of worrying about insurance or network coverage or anything like that. If therapy has been on your mind and it's something you've wanted to try out and you think you might benefit from it, then click the link in the description or head over to betterhelp.com slash Danny Walker. Clicking on that link will support the channel, but but it will also get you 10% off of your first month of BetterHelp. They'll be able to quickly connect you with a therapist and hopefully they will be the perfect match for you. Something unique that this pageant does is that they have gown before swim. So it's a little bit different, but it's fantastic. Before I get into like the nitty gritty of the performances, I have to say, first of all, Miss Columbia, very difficult pageant to win, okay? They're usually in semifinals or in a top five at Miss Universe, highly competitive. But this year, this year was exemplary and I don't know why more pageant fan pages weren't going crazy over this pageant. I didn't even know what to do with myself for this evening gown competition. I, it, it was so neck and neck, not between two or three contestants, between like 15. These performances were out of this universe. Staging for this was phenomenal. We also got to see a lot of the contestants. Long, long runway, they turned a corner. I love how they landed right in front of the judges too. It was just perfect. They all got a pose. That part was great. So let's talk about the actual performances though. Antioquia, gorgeous. And I have to say the earrings were just perfect for this gown. I was just really, really feeling that. Loved the look of confidence, but I will say I was waiting for a big full smile at some point. I really wanted to see it maybe towards the end of her final pose. Shades of purple and blue, I have to say, also seem to be the trend this year for this pageant. I don't know how everybody got the memo, but apparently that's kind of what was trending over there. So I thought it was really interesting as well. I just want to note this, that they even mention the languages that the contestants speak. Very unique. Can't really do that in the US. Most girls, they would just be like, English, English, English. <laughs> I feel like we have like such a small portion of contestants that are at least bilingual. I think Atlantico is beautiful, facially just so stunning. I do, however, wish she transitioned her facials less. That's usually not my note, but I think less. And I do think she needed a bit more eye contact with the camera. Buenaventura. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, take my breath away, okay? This look. This gown, that body, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She was doing everything for me. Just everything. For me, I was like top five immediately. I didn't know how they were doing the breakup, but I was like in my mind, top five. Like she needs to advance. I just loved her. I love the, the way that she carried herself. Oh my gosh, the cascading beading as well. This gown was incredible and on her. Just, 
what can I say? The pose at the end, the confidence, I mean, she got my attention. She would have gotten one of my high scores too. Golly, nice gown reveal we got going on here. Loved that. Just great gown and performance. The side cutouts, this was amazing. I was just, I, once again, I'm sitting here and I, I don't even know what we're doing in this episode. We have to nitpick so much here today because these ladies were just, they were so amazing. Casanari, ugh. This red on her, the red. Also this jaw structure, she reminds me so much of Jordan that competes in South Africa. She was in the top 10 Miss South Africa this year and she has that amazing just jawline, stunning. I also have to say she was nailing the sincerity and the smile here for me. The smile, the facial expressions, uh, the dress on her, and, and I gotta say this eye makeup, there's something about it. She needs to recreate this at Universe. I don't know if she did it, or if somebody else did, but she needs to learn if she doesn't know how because it just really did something to make her eyes stand out on stage and I loved it. And I'm like, that needs to carry over. So Sada was really, really pretty, but I have to say that this hairstyle on her was giving me teen. And there was something about her eye contact where it was almost like she wasn't looking at me, not connecting with me or with the camera, I should say. It was like she was looking past me. Um, and so I felt that there was a little bit of a disconnect there and that affected her performance and score. I think I am butchering that name. I apologize for that. Really pretty gown style on her. Honestly, like the gowns were just something else this year. Just, wow. I think that the construction of it could have been a little bit cleaner, although I, I like I like the vision though. I like where we were going with it. Confident walk, love the flow of the chiffon, although I did feel like that the proportions of the gown were a little bit off on her. I felt like the details should have been hitting at different spots on her body, right? When we're thinking like shoulders, bust, waist, high hip, low hip, things like that. Like it's so important to have good proportions with what you're wearing. It has to really, really be fitted and tailored to you. La Guajira, really pretty gown here, reminding me so much of Colombia in 2015 at Universe. Okay, that type of style of gown, those flat backs just all over a dress and it also allows the dress to kind of like flow. You can do a different style of skirt, skirt that's gonna not be quite as form fitting, which is what we saw here on her. Really, really beautiful. Uh, I just, I kind of feel like she got lost in the mix because it was so tough, but I still think she had a fantastic performance. I think something that really could have helped this though was just more posture. Open up that chest. Nariño, I love this gown color on her, but there was something about the shape of this gown, I can't quite put my finger on it, that it just wasn't helping her. I was like, there, there just could, I think, be a better shape on her, but she's stunning, she's beautiful, and it was a great performance. I do think, though, she needed to nail that last facial expression a little bit more, like have that connection with the judges and with the camera, so important. Norte de Sender, oh, 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 this gown, this gown. Okay, you would see a gown like this more so, I would say, at Miss Venezuela, and then you would see gowns that are like even more rhinestone than this at Miss Venezuela. So this gown, though, it was something else, okay? Yes, I know, we see the metallics, we see the glittering gowns, but this this must have been something to see in person. I loved this. The hair up was the right choice. She was so regal in this. So elegant. Truly, truly looked like a queen. Okay. Incredible. Also, the beautiful sheer sleeves that they added, the, the, the shoulders of this gown, the neck piece, just all of it. The way it snatched her waist. Huh. I need a designer like this in my life. Wow. This is what I need this or needed when I was competing. Incredible. Oh, love it. I loved it. I loved the gown. Obviously the gown, like, I mean, it makes her memorable, but uh, the performance was there. It was there. She was in my top five. Putumayo, I have to say this silver was fantastic on her. It looked amazing, but I will say it wasn't helping her walk. It looked like, once again, kind of inhibiting the walk a little bit, but I loved the style. Gosh, it looked so couture. And I also really like that dark underlay under the skirt. So it wasn't just legs. It was still, it was still a full gown, but it was a fantastic design. I loved this. Loved this. I also think that the performance could be enhanced with just smoother facial transitions. Quindio, oh my gosh, the fit of these gowns. The fit, I just, I, well, it's the bodies too, but, the, but still, the fit of the gowns on, out of this world. I do think that she needed to relax the mouth a little bit. I think there was too much movement in the mouth, but I do really love how for a second she like hesitated her walk with the music. Now, after the hesitation, I wish she would have sped it up. Like, play with the crowd a little bit, but not too much, okay? Like, get to your end, get to your pose. So, love that. But also, I just, I need this gown. I need this gown in my life. Risalda, this color combo really worked, okay? 
really unique color combination. I would say it's kind of reminding me of Miss Virginia USA's gown this year at USA where I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a tough color combo to really make work. But I feel like this was an effective way of doing it because it just it wasn't too harsh it wasn't distracting from her but it was unique uh, love the kate love love the fabric trailing behind her it had a great effect on stage she knew she was working this okay so you could just tell and my note was just like there's too many stunning women in colombia especially this year it's enough i've reached my limit santander beautiful she was working this gown loved it it was unique definitely eye-catching but the style of the gown wouldn't let her really pull her arms back so it was really kind of it was forcing her posture almost to go forward a little bit. I, I wish she wouldn't bite the lips as well, but I, but overall, she was working it. Soledad, my note, another stunning contestant. Loved the ending pivot. It was fantastic. I don't know what to do with this episode because I, I'm trying to give notes and it's very difficult. Toliman, beautiful blue gown, rare shade of blue. Love that, love how unique that was. But like I said, everybody was kind of wearing blues and purples this year, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, this gown though, it does remind me of Bea's gown for Miss Universe in 2021, one of her gowns, just like because of the way of the cutouts. Now, although this gown was really beautiful, very eye-catching, I do think she needed a different pose in the end. I don't think that the pose was doing anything for her or for the gown, and also, please, just same note, don't wave, don't wave. How do I say it? Valle? Valle? Not really sure. Stunning in red though. Absolutely stunning. Love this performance. I do think that the walk still needed a little bit of improvement, but I think that because gown came first, that really helped her. I think she needs to straighten the knee prior to letting that heel hit the floor. And that would just improve the overall walk. Honestly, these ladies were literally too good. Just too good. I don't know if that makes this a great recap or a terrible recap. Now we're at a top 15, so let's talk about swim. Amazonas, great energy here. Love how this was very appropriate for a swimsuit competition. We had a strong start to the show here. Honestly, super confident. Great job. Atlantico, hair looked great. Great in the pony for swim. It was, I was working more for swim, I think, than it was for gown, but also just her face. It's like the face, right? Stunning. Can't ignore it. Buenaventura is a Barbie. She's literally a Barbie. The face, the body, everything was amazing. The walk, I have, I have nothing, nothing for her. No complaints, I just love her. She's literally like the song lyrics, like compose at any angle, that's her. Guy, okay. who didn't tuck the tag in that swimsuit? Okay guys, there's my one, my one little critique for production. But anyways, very, very confident. She was working it, I was watching her and I was like, really motivated suddenly to work out. Casanare, love the hair bounce. Oh my gosh, like if you can get a hair bounce going, like it, it just draws the eyes. Wow, just wow, okay? This walk was not even just like a pageant walk, it just, it, it was just, it had such balance, but it felt more like a swimsuit fashion show walk, but still she was giving us enough attention where it was like, okay, this is about you and it's not just about the swimsuit. What was interesting about this walk for me is I feel like it was also a very, bookable walk for a swimsuit fashion show but she was still giving us enough of her so it wasn't just about the swimsuit and the balance it was just it was just a very unique performance for me for a swimsuit and i loved it loved it obsessed this might be my favorite swimsuit performance out of the 2023 20, year for contestants we'll see narino i loved her in gown but i loved her i would say just as much in swim okay obviously She's over here moving on, okay? Very, very confident, very sexy. She was just owning it, owning it. And I was eating it up. Norte Santander, I don't think that she needed two spin turns. I think that she would have been fine with one. Uh, she was great though. She was very relaxed, really delivering on this performance. It was fantastic. I do think though that she needed I, literally the slightest bit more energy. And I, I mean, literally a drop. Uh, and then I also feel like uh, she really could have worked in like a sexy face into the last pose for that performance. Risa Ralda, wow, oh, these women just, there's too much beauty here. There's, I, I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's, it's too much. I don't know what to do with it. Love the flowing hair. I do think though that she needed to relax the neck a little bit and have a little bit more sincerity in the smile. That could have 
helped in points. Baje, I really feel like the swim walk overall just can be improved here. I think that she was just a little bit too relaxed. Okay, you, you, you gotta have that that nice little balance. Um, and I, she was having trouble staying on that straight line for swim. And I talked about that in other episodes before. So make sure you practice kind of on that balance beam, so to speak. Next, we cut down to a top eight and they all got one onstage question. That was it, those were only questions. Prior to their onstage question, they also got kind of like a final look moment. And Buenaventura took her hair down out of her bun. I was like, why? Who told you to do that? There was something about the hair up in that gown with that neckline and honestly the face. When the hair came down, it covered more of her face, but when it was up, the face card doesn't decline for her, okay? And I don't know who told her to do that. I just feel like it needed to be up. It was, it was a better look for that styling of that gown, in my opinion. Huge thanks to Soraya for translating our questions again. Oh my gosh, everybody thanks Soraya in the comments because she's amazing and she makes these episodes possible. Thank you. Okay, so let's get right into it. First, Atlantico. She was asked, tell us three qualities of yours that make you worthy of the title Miss Universe Colombia 2023. She said, good evening, Barranquilla, Colombia. I am at home and I feel very happy to be here. Three qualities that make me worthy are authenticity, being me in all situations. The second is determination, which has brought me here. And the third is love for my country and the determination I have to help all young people, which is my social project that is based on education. I want to continue taking it to many more in the future if God allows me. Honestly, great answer here. Uh, she, you know, she hit her main three points quickly and then she got into the work that she does in education. I think it could have been a little bit more powerful if she would have shared maybe the name of this project that she's been working working on or a, a more specific detail. I felt like the info she was giving us was quite vague by just saying, oh, I'm helping young people through education, but how specifically? Buenaventura was asked, if you had to explain to your grandparents the importance of the rights of LGBTQ plus community, how would you do it? Interesting question. She said, very good evening to everyone, to all of Colombia, how I would explain to my grandparents what this community is. I would tell them that they belong, that we are all good people who are dedicated to giving love to the world. I would also tell them that despite the differences of our generations, the most important thing is that these people belonging to the LGBTQ plus community deserve equality like all people and all Colombians. Additionally, I would like to indicate then the bell went off. She continued. To my grandparents, elderly people, and two of them are already in heaven, that the most important thing is that those of us who are here in the present give all the love in the world to those who surround us. The bell went off again, and she said, thank you very much. Oh my goodness, if she was competing at Supra this year, this would not have happened. Oh my gosh, remember I talked about that? One of the hosts, when that time limit hit, that host was pulling that mic. She would have been totally cut off if it, if it was at that pageant. Uh, so I feel like that hurt her. That hurt her. I think one thing I really like that she said in this answer was, uh, I would like to tell them, despite the differences of our generations, the most important thing is that these people belonging to the LGBTQ plus community deserve equality. I thought that was just like so well said in this. And honestly, it was like, overall, it's a really great answer. I think that she was uh, quite well spoken, but gosh, that time limit, I think it hurt her. Gali, they asked her, what is your opinion on the use of filters and photos and videos on social media and what is their impact on beauty standards? It's like interesting. Two part questions are a little bit tough. They're tricky. She says, hello, how are you? Good afternoon, everyone. Well, my opinion about filters as such on social media is that for many, it is an instant thing and for others, it is a lifestyle. But I believe that each person is free to use what they want on these platforms as long as they keep in mind that we use it for good and not for evil, not to accuse, not to point our fingers to one another. Let us always use it for good and with lots of love. Thank you. She got the audience going on this one. It was good, but I think other contestants were just ahead of her in terms of overall performance and the judges are probably thinking on that. Casanare was asked, how do you maintain your authenticity in a competitive environment? Cool question. She said, good evening, Barranquilla. I believe that my authenticity depends on my essence and the way of being. I have always considered myself an authentic woman and that is what makes me unique. And it's what I always want to show to my daughter, to the people present here and to the entire universe that they do not need to depend on others, on the opinions of others, which is what makes them unique is their essence. That is my authenticity. Thank you. So this is interesting. I think she said a lot of great things here. And I think that the key here is that she touched on the fact that she has a daughter, she's a mother. 
with the new rules that's historic so i think that is what she was really appealing to in this answer do i think this would be enough at miss universe no i don't think she actually really directly answered that question head on they they asked her how are you maintaining your authenticity and she was just stating that she is an authentic person and that's what she wants to be and that's what she wants to encourage to people but it's like but how do you stay how do you maintain that authenticity so it was beautifully said but I do think that she would need some uh, adjustments if this were her actual onstage answer at Miss Universe. But I also think it worked because she was very confident and spoke with such conviction. Norte de Sender was asked, why is supporting other women important to you? She says, I love this question because a few minutes ago we were backstage praying and saying thank you to God because we as women are making history. We freed ourselves from the prejudices with which we came into this competition because they told us it would not be easy. But we, the new generation, are breaking stereotypes and saying that the envy that existed before no longer exists because we simply must try to be stronger ourselves. Then the bell rung and she said, and support, obviously, sorority. Thank you so much. This is another case for me where I think she said a lot of beautiful things, but I don't really feel like she hit the nail on the head with this. Like, why do you believe it's important to support other women? Uh, not just talking about and discussing the support of other women, but like, why is that important? But she was stunning and very confident in her delivery, and that doesn't hurt. Risa Rada was asked, as Miss Universe Colombia, how would you use your platform or promotion to positively inspire young women in your country? She said, good evening, everyone, and above all to all Colombia. Tonight, I want to tell you that my platform has always been to raise the voice for those women and those women who have felt vulnerable. The fact of coming here to explain to you that dreams can be fulfill fulfilled if you get out of bed every night to work hard for it, it can be done. Every woman has the empowerment to feel from her heart, to be able to change those feelings, to accept herself, to work for a society that the common good bell rang and then she said and bring to the greater universe that united colombia that we love so much so i think she could have been more specific with how are you actually going to use this platform so really hitting on well what is my platform what cause issue do i care about and how am i going to enact measurable change am i going to do that through public speaking appearances by being a brand ambassador for different charitable organizations by hosting an online campaign like in what ways are you going to make sure that you are effective I think that would have helped. Santander was asked, what quality of your parents do you admire the most and how have they influenced your life? And she said, good evening, Barranquilla. Well, this question seems to me, I love it, because for a bit, from a very young age, my parents have motivated me to fight for my dreams and have instilled in me the value of perseverance. We were victims of forced displacement due to armed conflict. And today, if it, isn't, if it was not for them and for the change they made in our lives, which inspires my brother and me to continue and that dreams can be achieved. If it weren't for that, I wouldn't be here today. Now, I think that if she would have delivered this in a more passionate way, that she really could have pulled on people's heartstrings with this story. Um, I think it was great that she talked about how they... Uh, influenced her life and then one thing that was interesting is she says that they instilled in her perseverance but she didn't necessarily say that that's the quality she admires about them it's really tough in those moments though to be super direct um and with all things considered i still think she did a great job here but i think it was a missed opportunity to pull on some heartstrings with a personal story that they asked her shakira is a symbol of female empowerment today do you agree that empowerment is not crying but cashing in ha <laughs> Interesting question. Good. Good night, everyone. First of all, I consider that women today are capable of developing different roles in any scenario. So empowerment for me can either be cashing in or can be succeeding in any of the scenarios in which a woman gets her mind to. So I think that the answer was a little bit short. I think it, it felt short. It felt like she was headed in a good direction, but she needed to give us uh, a little bit more there. So it is what it is. So after that, we had our top three announcements. Second runner-up, Buena Ventura. Loved her, but I feel like that that two bell was really, really tough to overcome. Uh, but I don't... Can you recompete in Colombia? What a tough, tough two, though. Oh, gosh. Norte de Sander and Casanari. 
Oh my gosh. I, honestly, either, either could have at that point. Our first runner up though was Norte de Sander and Casanare. I feel like what really put her over the edge is being a historic winner, being a mother and a wife. It's going to be a branding point in Miss Universe. Just look out for it. Uh, now, thinking about her overall performance, like I said, I gave those little critiques for her onstage question. That, I think, needs a little bit of work. But her stage performances, those stage performances, those are going to be very difficult to outscore for anybody else. And that's why watching, for me, watching this pageant just kind of threw my Miss Universe predictions all over the place. And I still have more research to do. She was fantastic. I loved her. Hope you loved this episode. Please check out the other ones. This is a very long recap. Thank you for clicking on this episode. And in the meantime, until I share more about Miss Universe coverage, check out these other recent ones. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you soon.